A component that you will find in any electronic board, especially the most expensive ones, such as air conditioning, refrigerators, and washing machines. They will find a fuse and a varistor. Inside this little box, there is a component that usually explodes when it reacts and that is why it is covered with this, with this plastic. But inside it we find a varistor. How does a fuse and varistor work? They are a circuit as a whole, which what they do is protect the electronic board against high voltage. We are going to draw it in this graph to understand it a little better. We are going to make some graphs to understand. Until now what we have been seeing was the part of the circuit that is in charge of rectifying the voltage, that is, we were talking about the four diode rectifier and the filter capacitor. But this is not where electricity enters a board. There are still components before and something that you are going to find. Precisely is a varistor. N and a fuse. Here, then, we have our AC voltage, which can be 220 or 110 or 127, and here you will find a fuse and a varistor. Whenever something is placed in continuity with one of the two conductors, it is said that this is placed in series. And whenever something is placed, in such a way that it joins the two conductors, we always speak of line and neutral, we say that it is placed in parallel. Very good now, it's better. How do these two components work? Well, it is a very simple way of working, this is a varistor, in other words it is a resistance or a variable resistor, the resistance value of this component varies depending on something. In the case of varistors, it varies in function to voltage that it detects at each of its extremes. Let's look here. Here we have a varistor with 385. These varistors are generally used when there are voltages of 220, but the voltage of 220, as we have already seen, is actually 310. What happens then? When the voltage approaches 385, what the varistor does is let the electrons pass. We are going to draw them that way we understand it. It lets the electrons pass. It detects more voltage. It lets the electrons pass because its resistance drops. And since so many electrons pass what the flow rate increases and they exceed the value of this fuse, which could be due to example, 315 amps. What happens then? That fuse opens. The varistor makes a short circuit and when the fuse opens, the circuit is completely protected, the circuit is no longer closed, and it is de-energized. This is a protection against high voltage. If the voltage rises to perhaps 265 volts, and alternating voltage are MS, that's when it's going to trigger the varistor, it shorts and it's going to explode. If you pay attention, the varistors are a ceramic and two wires that touch. Of course, each one has different values depending on the point where it is working. These are 471. These are 385. And if you have 110 volts or 127, of course, the value will be different. When replacing them, you have to get the one that is identical to the one that the circuit originally had. But how do we know that it is in good condition? This is easy because the component has to be open, so to speak it doesn't have to produce continuity. We put the multimeter in continuity, we will measure its connectors, and the result has to be open line or several megaohms, perhaps 10, 20 megaohms, or open line as in this case. This is in good condition. You will find it in blue or yellow. 
Regarding the fuse, which is also part of this circuit, the fuse has to have direct continuity. We can put the multimeter in the sound function so that it sounds when continuity is made, and there just has to be continuity. If it is going to be replaced, it must be replaced with one of the same voltage and the same amperage as the one it originally had. Here we can see the values of the fuse printed on the electronic board. One more detail to take into account. Some think that since the board has a protection against high voltage, so the high voltage problem would be solved and I will never have problems with the board. Actually it is not so. It is not an absolute protection against high voltage. Why? Because actually this varistor has a response time. The response time is from 5 to 20 nanoseconds. For us this is an insignificant amount of time. It is instantaneous. But if lightning were to strike, it is a short time since lightning can burn other components. I mean lightning, an electrical discharge from a storm, it can burn other components, and the varistor will not react in time. Take into account that a definitive protection so that a circuit is not affected at all by what happens on the line is a U-P-S uninterruptible power supply system. This definitively protects a piece of equipment. It is a device or component that it is added in the electrical installations. If they want, they can investigate. Although it is a definitive protection to all devices, the UPS can be damaged. In reality, there is no definitive solution for line voltage problems. Here we were able to analyze how a protection circuit against high voltage varistor and fuse work along the circuit of an inverter board. Two are also going to find other varistors and other fuses. So it is good that from now on you know how it is the operation of these components.